So, welcome everyone to Derby to a monumentally special episode of Raidercast as well. Um, yeah, we're all here to celebrate 25 years of Tomb Raider. I can't believe it. And yeah, we're here where it all began. And yeah, huge audience full of Tomb Raider fans, or at least I hope Tomb Raider fans. And uh, yeah, most importantly, we are going to be joined by fan favorite legendary voice actress of Lara Croft herself, Judith Gibbons. Please welcome Judith, everyone. So, welcome, Judith. Thank you. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Lovely to see so many of you here. It's great. It's really great. It's an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. So, let's dive straight in. Okay. This is going to be a question I'm sure you've answered many, many times yeah. over the years, but let's talk a little bit about how you came to become Lara. How did you get the role? Um, my brother was working at Core Design, Martin, and he was one of the programmers, and he said that they were holding auditions for... Uh, a character in a, in a, in a game. Um, I didn't know what she looked like. Um, and I sort of ummed and ahed. I thought, oh, no. Anyway, I did, obviously, <laughs> I went down. And um, then I knew what she looked like. And then they just gave me a couple of pages of script. So I've got quite a low voice, I think, naturally. Mm. So I lifted my voice up a little bit and, and made it a little bit kind of posher and... Um, I got a call next morning and so, say, yeah, yeah, I got it. So, and then we started recording almost straight away. Pardon me if that was just your way of trying the doors for me. <laughs> wow, very fast turnaround yep, in the process yep, then. Yeah. Wow, what was that like? Did you have to travel to record the voice as well? Yeah, yeah, we went down to London a lot, London and back, but I did, I did do a lot in at Core Design as well, ah, in okay. their studios as well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You were also given very strict directions on the sort of way that you should do the voice. How did you feel about that? Like, what were your thoughts well, on that? Well. No, no, that was okay because it was the first thing I'd ever, I'd, I'd n never done anything like this before. So, of course, I was, yes, yes, so, no, so, what, what have you, you know, what, whatever's right for, for you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we, we tried it different ways. And um, basically, I, I just did what I was told. <laughs> I was quite naive, you know, it's my first, it was my first recording job. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, honestly, it was quite strict in one way. So that was back in 1997. Seven. Uh, were you aware, even at that point, if you weren't sure of what she looked like and stuff, but were you aware of, even then, her sort of impact? No, not, not, not until I first started recording and, and reading all like, the reviews and, 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 and stuff like that and learning from, from the other team members and, and, and stuff. You know, I didn't realise it was such a, a phenomenon, really. Oh, know. that's amazing. And, st and still is, isn't it, really, today? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit as well about those times and the sort of things that you remember and working with Core and some of your best memories of being Lara. Um, uh, the whole thing was just a complete whirlwind. I mean, from when I got the first audition, we were just recording, recording and then promoting, but obviously I wasn't allowed to tell anybody that I was actually doing the voice. So I was kept in, sort of in the, in the wings, if you like, but I was, uh, Nell McAndrew, who was, was a model when I was the voice, but she wasn't allowed to talk. She was allowed to have all the pictures mm. taken and everything, you know, but I had to keep it like really quiet. So that was a bit disheartening for me in a way, because of course I wanted to scream it to the world, do you know what I mean? Um, but it was just part of the contract, and you know, I wasn't allowed to tell, so. Yeah. That must have been really difficult. I can't imagine, like. Yeah, the only person so I could tell was my son, who was 10 at the, ten at the time. <laughs> I said, don't tell anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> she told people at school, yeah. my mum's Lara Croft. And like, no. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, yeah, I was going to ask a little bit more about, you had to travel. So you had to go to, was it Atlanta? Yeah, the big E3 uh, Atlanta. Um, and my first time in the States um, on a big long haul plane. I was, it, it was just so overwhelming. 
but I always refer to it as my days in the cupboard because, um, because I wasn't allowed to say that I was doing the voice. So they had like 16 big TV screens up and then Laura was projected onto the screens and I was in the back in the cupboard. Uh, and there was like a one minute delay to pretend that I was in London. And then the people in the audience would ask me questions and then I'd, you know, ask them back as Lara, but literally I was in the back in a cupboard. <laughs> and I had kind of like, sort of, not, not, not a script as such, but like, say for example, if they asked me what my favorite film was, well, as Lara, then I had to say, oh, it's Deliverance. So I had like certain things that they'd say, you know, what, what I like, but unfortunately, um, the Americans were, oh, Lara, you're the bomb. <laughs> And what size are your breasts? <laughs> you know, and things like that. <laughs> so I had to sort of improvise and say things like, um, don't you know it's rude to ask a lady those sorts of questions? And, you know, that sort of thing. But it, 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 I think we were going to do it once a day or twice a day. And it became really, really popular. So we did it, you know, quite a few times. And so really, there was no script. I just, I just kind of chatted to people, you know, you know like that. But... Uh, yeah, that was that was really, really interesting. But then, of course, when it all when I all finished and I came out the cupboard, and they're all round gathering round the model on the motorbike, and I, I'm sort of going, okay, my bit's done now. You know? <laughs> 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 so, Walking yeah. past, thinking yeah. they don't know who I am. Yeah, amazing experience, though. Yeah. I was going to ask, what was it like, sort of being around people in in. 97 as well, like that sort of big gaming convention. I wonder if it was very different to an event like this or if it sort of had the same oh, sort of massive. feeling to it. It's like when you go to the NAC, I suppose, or you know, any of the cosplay people, you know, when you go to the Comic Cons or any cosplay thing. It was massive. I mean, you had Nintendo, Sony, all, all the big names, you know, some I'd never heard of. So I just went around the whole, you know, when I got time, yeah. just went around the whole and just taking pictures and, you know, just getting a general feel for. Of course, they showcase every new game that you know that's coming out at the time. I think it was Mario Brothers and you know all of that sort of stuff. And of course, Tomb Raider two, and then Tomb Raider three. Mm. So, yeah. so, at uh, that sort of convention as well, was it at then you sort of really got a feel for how big Tomb Raider was, or how big it was slowly yeah. becoming at that stage? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. It, it was. It was. Um, it was just. It was just amazing. It was like. It was amazing, but it was like, it was really good because, like, you can see the sort of like community of people, you know, that, that and, and, and the fans. I mean, the fans are just, are just incredible now. I mean, obviously, then they didn't know me, mm. but fans now are just so lovely, so lovely. I mean, all the voices of Lara have been brilliant, all of them have, and they're all different, and everyone's got their, their preference. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think it's special for me because it started here, you know, and I'm from Derby and it's Derby, and, and then it's like from Derby, it's worldwide. Do you know what I mean? So. Wow, that must be. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm sort of blabbering on a bit, but I tend to do that when I'm nervous. So. <laughs> <It> sounds <laughs> Bear like, with like me. such an amazing, surreal experience. Yeah, it was. Wow. That's well, amazing. Um, do you get recognised as Lara's voice when you're out and about? No. I find that really hard. Like I can't yeah. imagine I don't, people. I, I, I don't say it, but if I'm, if especially my sister, uh, if people know my sister, she's, um, she say, oh, don't you know who she is? Don't you know who she is? She says she's my PA, but she's not really. <laughs> um, no, and then and then it gets told, and then they say, oh, and then it gets back on Facebook, and then, but I, I don't. I mean, I just don't mind. It, it's been quiet for a long um, until. 20 year anniversary really and then people start I mean Facebook's a big thing now isn't it and yeah. so you know but I'm quite happy to answer any questions on Facebook or you know I say to people if you want my um, to make, send them an autograph if they want it presuming they want it you know just give me their address privately obviously and I'll send it you know I'll do what I can you know the fans are just amazing honestly that's lovely really really humbled by them mm. yeah so I think personally I think you've got such a wonderfully unique voice so it's, it's really surprising that people wouldn't recognise you speaking out about. Could I just have a show of hands? If you heard Judith out and about, would you recognise her as Lara? <laughs> well, it's strange about voices, but I was um, 
I come from Birkenhead, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really a scouser. Um, but no, I went to school in London. Sorry, that was really bad. Uh, I went to school in London, so that's kind of right. If you talk to my sister, I mentioned her. she's more of a Cockney, and I've got my head pottery, as I used to say. But I mean, I do slip into a up my duck every now and then. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. She got a resurgence as a scouse Lara Croft. Oh yes, it comes, it comes out, yeah. <laughs> Especially when I visit, when I visit my mum. You know, because she's still got that little bit of a Birkenhead twang. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, I was going to ask further, have you had much interaction with fans over the years and have they told you what Lara means to them? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they, a lot of them say got them through the child, not got them through the childhood, but they enjoyed it through their childhood. Um, and now they still like to play the games because of the nostalgia, I think it says in Doll's book, um, that he still likes to play them once or twice a year just to, to keep that nostalgia up and, and, and the memories and everything like that. Um, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. I've spoken to a few people as well over the last couple of years, and it's always been really heartwarming to see what Lara Croft and what all of the different voice actresses have meant to various fans across the world yeah, and how it has got them through tough times as well. It's like, yeah, it's a lot as well about nostalgia, but Lara is comfort for a lot of people. Yeah, that's, that's, that's lovely. I think it's, that's really special. Yeah, it's really, really nice. We're going to go a little bit more about you in comparison to Lara now as well. Okay. So, in what ways, if any, do you consider yourself similar to Lara? Do you have any Lara-like traits? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm not adventurous at all. Um, but uh, back in, I think it was 97 or 98, when I was doing The Voice, Darby even telegraphed did, um, a spread um, and they compared me to Lara. So they had Judith's vital statistics, Lara's vital statistics. I drove a Sierra, Lara drove whatever, whatever, you know. And I thought that was, um, when it first came out, I was a bit perturbed by it, you know. But mind you, I was a lot slimmer then than blonde. And, uh, <laughs> um, but in one way, I was glad because then it got released to the press. And so I didn't have to hide it anymore. Um, but no, being anything like Laura, I know sometimes I'm quite strong and assertive. Um, but like now, I mean, I'm still, I'm nervous, you know, and I don't think Laura would ever be nervous, would she? You know, she'd just cock a gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> I never, ever got to hold the guns, you know. Really? The model, they wouldn't let me. Maybe today, I'm sure if some of the cosplayers would let you hold theirs. Oh, it's fantastic. You see the way they, they make their things, the, the costumes, it's fantastic. It's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. This is wonderful. Attention to detail as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Now, it'd be great to get some pictures of you with some cosplayers later. Yeah. That'd be really cool. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. Um, have you, I know you said that you're not very adventurous, but have you had any croft like holidays or travel? No, I, I'm very boring. I go to the same place every year. Whereabouts do you go? Uh, I go to Malta. Yeah, um, we, we love the island. Um, my dad was posted there in the 70s. He was in the army. He was posted there. And then my parents uh, lived there for 18 years. Wow. Until we re relocated us back. So, yeah, we still go back every year. We love the island. And in fact, my mum's there at the moment. <laughs> That's so. lovely. It's like a little home away from home. Yeah, maybe Laura should go to Malta. Oh, yeah, that'd be fantastic. And do some diving. <laughs> <laughs> So that's actually leading me quite nicely into the next question. As a, a big hypothetical, if you were in charge of the series, whereabouts on earth would you think would be a great place for Lara to go to? God, is there anywhere she hasn't been? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's a really hard one. So Australia. We, yeah, we still we haven't seen in Australia. Mm. I don't think we've seen Australia. Derby. Derby. <laughs> <laughs> Derby does solve. <laughs> Raiding the quad. I don't know. Ask, maybe ask, ask the audience. What do you think? Yeah. Malta. Yeah. There you go. See. It would. It'd be really cool. It was upsetting as well recently. The the Azure window, which I always thought would be a really nice place for to explore in a Tomb Raider game, and that's gone. But now. it's gone now. Yeah. Collapsed. It's, it's, 
Oh, that's very sad. Dear me. So, big question time before we uh, move on to some audience questions, I think. It's been 25 years. It's been 24 for yourself. Yeah. Why do you think Lara was, and still is, relevant in pop culture? What makes her so big? I think because at first she was just so unique, so so different. Although at first, I think in the early days, there was a lot of discussion about her being just this sex symbol. Mm. But when you go into the games, she wasn't so much of a sex symbol. You know, she was an adventurous and... She got weapons, and you, you know you could do this and do that with her, and you, and you sort of like followed her into the games. So it's like you were doing it. I'm, I'm so different, um, and it's just evolved so much. You know, I mean, it, they're like the movies, aren't they? You know, and and, and the way that you have to, you can just control her yourself. I think that was that was different as well, and I think it's just it's just because it's evolved, but. People, I think people have divided because people, the people that like the, they were like the classics, and obviously the young people say, are with 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 the new Laura. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I, I mean, it's still going strong, isn't it, worldwide? And it started here, so That's we fantastic. can't argue with that, can we? Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. What was it like? Had you watched the Tomb Raider films as well, the Angelina Jolie and Alicia Vikander more recently? Have you watched yeah, those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What them. must have? Mu well, must when have when. Like? when when they were starting to talk about the film, mm. I was still doing Lara, and I think they were talking to Paramount. I don't remember who actually did it in the end. I think it was Paramount. Paramount, I yeah. Think. And they were thinking of Sandra Bullock at first. Wow. I, I, that's what I think I remember. <laughs> but before it was going to be kept made, made action, they were going to animate it. Wow. So <laughs> I might have been in... The voice as well yeah, for that. They probably got a big star to do it. Because I think mm -hmm. Minnie Driver's done some. Yes, Laura, there was a, a um, 10 year anniversary <coughs> cartoon series yeah. with Minnie Driver. But I do think Angelina Jolie did a fantastic job. And I also think um, Alicia did as well. Yeah. She did, yeah. Because there's two different Lara's. Oh, yeah. Very, you know, yeah. the classic, and then there's a new Lara. So, yeah. They both so another one's perfect. due out, isn't it? Yes, I think, yeah. Alicia's uh, planning the second one. Yeah. She's great. No, great. I think they're both, they're all great. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so those were all my main questions, and I would really, really like to open it to the audience. If people have questions, please stick your hands up, and That's Luke one. will yeah. run around well. with his microphone. Oh, so, so, sorry. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya, nice to meet you. Um, just a quick question. Did you think Lara was going to get as big as it has done when you did the audition for The Voice? No, no, not at all. No. In fact, because I didn't realise how big it already was, you know what I mean? So, um, no, I didn't. It, and then from two to 2, I only had very few lines to say. And then as two to 3 progressed, there was, there was more and more things to say, more publicity, more things to do, more going here, there and everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Hi, Judith. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to be greedy and ask a couple of questions, if that's all right. First of all, have you played two to 2 and 3? And oh. I was dreading somebody <laughs> question. And have you locked the but butler in the, in the fridge? I can't play them. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it. Really? No. Okay. There's only two games I've ever tried, the Tomb Raider and Call of Duty, and I just got killed straight away. <laughs> so, no, I'm afraid I can't. No, it's cool. And, and just, sorry, just finally, um, is there a prominent line from the scripts that you remember? And can you say it, please? Into the mic. Can you give us, like, a really, like... Well, um, <laughs> there is a line that I'm going to read later on, actually, it was, was one of my audition lines. Just, um, pardon me if that was just your way of trying the doors for me. <laughs> Hi, Judith. Hi, Hi Chris. Yes. Uh, my question is, if there was an opportunity for, say, a flashback sequence in a future Tomb Raider game, would you reprise your role as Lara? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If they'd have me, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Would that please you? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Judith. Oh, yeah. I was, um, as you were saying, like, uh, pr prospective um, locations in future Tomb Raider games, what would you say to a Tomb Raider game that might be set in, like, Madagascar or... Um, um, 
Petra, you know, that place in Jordan with the, the built into the mountain. Do you think that'd be a good place for a tomb? Yeah, room? yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good answer. Yeah, when we were saying, you know, where, where would you like Laura to go? Yeah, some something really, really different, and um, you know, uh, Petra raise would more be tombs incredible. with different things in. <laughs> wow. God, that sounds stupid. <laughs> Is that really naive? <laughs> Hi, so this is Hi, kind yeah. of for both of you. Uh, Judith, yeah. what, uh, which was your favourite cutscene to record? And Chris, what was your favourite uh, to watch with Judith performing? <laughs> you go first. <laughs> Don't you think you've seen enough? <laughs> 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 Go on, Chris. Yeah, I'm going to say I think uh, there's a cutscene just at the end of the Temple of Xi'an level on Tomb Raider 2 where she emerges at the top to see Bartoli stab himself. Bartoli. Bartoli. <laughs> before. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just something bizarre about that. She sees him stab himself and be carried off and she sort of runs around and there's just something really badass about the way she just jumps down and there's a great camera angle where she just lands and it's like starts the next level it's does great. anybody else get annoyed by uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh I think everyone loves it it's iconic really? oh yeah I have it I have it on the <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fantastic wow <laughs> hi hello Oh, hi, yeah. Uh, so, were you wearing the Lara Croft outfit when you were recording the lines to get yourself into the character? No. <laughs> no. no. Have you ever no, dressed up as Lara? No, I've never dressed up as Lara, no. Not my legs, no. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> if you had to pick between Tomb Raider 2 and 3, which was your best experience? 3, because I did more. Did a lot more. A lot more travelling. And two was so so new to me, you know. Um, I sort of got into it a little bit more, and they let me do a bit more in in three. Yeah, so, so three. Hiya. Would Hiya. you be willing to perform some of Lara's death grunts? No, I'm joking. You don't have. To. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. I'm Sixty next year. Come on. <laughs> Back in the day, maybe. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> Hi again, Judy. Oh, hi. Um, just another quick one. Are you friends with any of the other voice actresses? And do you get together and do like a little Laura Croft voice off? <laughs> yes, yes, I am. I am friends. I'm friends with um, Shelley and Janelle. Yeah, lovely, lovely people. We all got them really well together. Yeah. Hi, Judith. Um, hi. Yeah. When you was at Core Design and obviously doing the voice acting, how much direction was you actually given in terms of how Laura was going to perform in the cutscenes or any of the actions she was going to give? How much direction? Because obviously the lines, like you say, don't you think you've seen enough? Not. Um, was you told that that was going to be I shot was them on, at the end of it? <laughs> yeah, I was on that, but a lot of the times I didn't know what was going on in the scene. I just got the lines. Um, you know, so if I wasn't if I wasn't saying it right, but it, she was very regimented in a way that's that's how she was but if if they'd have said to me um oh i don't know for example i think there's a scene when she's on top of is it in london with a bell yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but you know she was fighting then she's fighting and i'm just standing there saying so you might like to mind the bell do you know what I mean? It was a bit like, well, maybe if I'd given a bit more direction, then I would perhaps have to be a bit more breathy or... Do you understand? Yeah. So it was just very, very regimented at the time. Hi, Judith. Hi, yeah. Uh, I just wondered, I know you and Chris ch touched on this, um, how does it feel knowing that Angelina Jolie would have listened to you and your portrayal as Lara? I mean, there's not many of us here that can say Angelina Jolie's heard her voice. So I just wondered. I'd, sorry, I didn't hear that. Did you? Sorry. Sorry. How does it feel that Angelina Jolie listened to your portrayal oh, of Oh, I didn't Lara? know. Oh, I didn't know. Did she? Mm. She had said that she'd studied. 
Oh, I don't know that. Where, where did you find that out? Um, just online, she had said that obviously to get into the role, she had listened to the people that portrayed her. At that point, it would have been Shelley, Shelley. you, and maybe a bit of Jonelle. Jonelle but yeah. during the time of the production of the movie, it was yourself that was oh, voicing wow, I didn't herself. know that. Thank you for telling me that. That's, that's really... Wow. <laughs> she thinks she wants my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Um, Morning. Bit of a long question, this one. So I was lucky enough to be born in 1996, so I've had the joys of growing up with Tomb Raider literally my whole entire life. So to like sit here, obviously see you, hear you, especially say lines, it's quite surreal. So when you're saying earlier, like when you did the audition for The Voice and you had no idea who she was, you didn't look at her or anything like that, what sort of moment clicked for you when this series meant a lot for people when you had that moment of going, oh, I now get how influential and how big Lara is? Um, it took quite a while actually, because um, like I was just to me it was just, I was just doing a recording job if, if you get me. Um, but then the more more I was asked to do, and the more interviews and and uh, more publicity, I think oh it's not just about this game coming out, it's about everything about the games and and how they're made. People that fans are interested in you know how the, how they. They're done, you know, the, the pixels and polygons and all things like that. So it was not just about Laura and the characters, it was about how the game is actually made, you know, because it was, it's a, it was different kind of levels, levels, wasn't it, to a normal uh, polygonal, whatever it's they're called, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it was, it was everything, wasn't it? It was, it was that plus the female character plus, plus the sensationalism of it and... and, and and obviously how popular it became, yeah. Was there noticeably more publicity that you had to engage in between Tomb Raider 2 and Tomb Raider yeah. 3? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and of course from Tomb Raider 2, Tomb Raider 3, the guys had to work so hard mm-hmm. to get Tomb Raider 3 out in one year that, you know, I mean, you've, you've probably heard that they, they slept in the offices, you know, working 24-7, you know, to get it out. They worked really, really hard on 3. It was very, very gruelling for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but with a good result, so. <laughs> Hi again, Judith. Hi, yeah. Hello, are we here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't see these lights, they're so bright. <laughs> um, did you strain your voice screaming when the Lara falls <laughs> in the studio? Or did you have to pre warn anyone in, in case someone heard you scream loudly and think, what the hell was going on? <laughs> no, because like, when, when you're in, in the booth, when you're in a recording booth, they, they say, right, screaming. They might say, like, scream like you're scared, scream like you're sexy. How do you scream when you're sexy? <laughs> uh, so, basically, you just, you just do a lot of different ones and just hope for the best. You know, I think it's up to them to choose which one. Hi, Judith. Uh, Hi, two questions. Uh, you were the voice of Sophia Lee, too, weren't you? I remember doing the voice and it does sound like me right um, <laughs> my can, question is but I'm not quite sure I don't know if I can say that on record right okay but it does sound like me mm. oh okay <laughs> ah Miss Croft I take it you're ready to sign on to what well my books I just wanted to know if it was you did you do it in one take or or like was it two takes and they edited <laughs> it together oh. or? Lots of takes. Love, lots, lots of takes. Yeah. L- not, not just so... I mean, Lara especially. Yeah. You know, because uh, I, I do tend to talk really, really fast. Right. And so they all kept like, slow down, slow down. Slow down. Yeah. Try again, try again. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Okay. Hi there, Judith. I just want to say from behalf of everybody here, thank you so much for doing the voice of Laura, and I think you are a huge inspiration to everybody here. Uh, when I say that growing up myself, I suffer from anxiety and depression, and I think you really helped me um, growing up, and you are a huge inspiration to everybody here, so thank you. Um, my question to you um, is, um, when you were sort of voice acting Laura, did you do anything to kind of mentally prepare yourself? As Laura is such a strong woman, did you ever do anything to mentally prepare yourself? And when you were doing Tomb Raider 2 and 3, did you ever play Tomb Raider 1 or have sort of any contact with Shelley Blonde before to kind of you know, prep yourself for the, uh, the, for the voice? No, no, I never, I never contacted Shelley, not till uh, a long, long time afterwards. 
um, mentally prepared myself. Um, I just know, I just went in and did it and, and just tried not to think about it too much, but at the same time, you know, get what they wanted out of it, you know, trying to enjoy it. It was, it was very, very nerve wracking, you know, at first, but, um, you know, obviously if I wasn't doing it right or they didn't like it, then they'd just say, and say you know, try again, try again. Um, but I can, I can relate to the anxiety. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to live with something like that. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm happy to have well, helped in some small way. That's really touched me. Thank you. <laughs> Hello again, greedy me, with two questions. Um, I'm curious as to, do you have any memorabilia from like, you, you know, your, old, your, your original script or anything that you perhaps still have from the, the recordings? Yes, cool. I, have, I, I have a two made of three scripts and I think Luke has one that I gave him. Two made of three. Two made of three, yeah. Um, I have, um, I've got a t-shirt, um, I've never worn it, it's just a, a Lara on it, black one. Wow. I've got, I had a hat, cap, pyjamas that Mark Spencer's did, um, sweatshirt, and a de deck of playing cards. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you have a little, little shrine in the house then, too? No. <laughs> <laughs> With some incense burning and some guns no. next to it. <laughs> no, no. No, that, I think that's about it, really. And, and finally for me, I promise, um, what was different about your kind of approach um, and, I guess, mentality going into three compared to two? Um, I was a lot more confident um, because I'd sort of established, OK, I know, I know what I'm doing, kind of know what I'm doing with her if I'm allowed to carry on. Um, you know, there are some things that I would, I would like to have done but I wasn't allowed. Um, but no, I don't know, the whole experience, I mean, I'm talking about it 24, 24 years on and, and people are still interested and, you know, I mean, sometimes I think, oh, don't tell, stop telling anybody, just, you know, but I think it's, I don't know, I'm just humbled, I think it's just wonderful, wonderful, thank you so much, everybody. Hi. Um, Hi, yeah. I, I'd just love to thank you because um, growing up in Hong Kong, I picked up your accent and Shelley's accent even before I understood what the cutscenes were, because there were no subtitles. I, just, <laughs> but I, I really loved reenacting you and um, Shelley's performance back then. But um, I'd like to know, like, did you know that you were being replaced by Janelle at that point when Tomb Raider 4 I was announced? Re uh, yeah, what happened was um, I had to re-audition for 4 because she was going to be young mm -hmm. and they were going to use me as the old Laura and Janelle as the younger Laura. And then they just decided it was time for a change. Yeah, there was no animosity or you know nothing like that. I auditioned, she auditioned, and you know she got it. So yeah, no, it's fine. Hi again. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Looking back now, would you say you would you did the perfect portrayal of Laura as you could, or is there anything that you would have changed, knowing how many different voice actors there's been and having listened to any of them? Is there anything that you would have gone? I wish I did that as opposed to yes. what I did. Yeah, when sometimes when I, I don't, I mean, I don't listen to it, but sometimes people post things on Facebook and I think, I have a listen to it, I think, ooh. I'll tell you what I always cringe at is, what was that, Vera de Lula Venice. Yeah, but that, yeah. Aha, uh -huh. Gianni Bartelli, Via Caravelli Venice. They kept saying to me, slow down, slow down. I said, I've just got to get it out. Blah, 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 Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, oh. Well, of course, now I, you know, I could have done that, but, but yeah, a lot of things I think I, I could have probably acted a bit more, if I would well, I'd like to have acted a bit more, rather than just, like I said before, it's, that's why I think some people find me very boring. Thank you. Hi, Judith, again, me. To the left, to your right. Oh, I'm Come so here. sorry, I can't. Sorry, darling. <laughs> um, just a, a couple of questions, that's okay. First one, um, did you record any voiceovers for like commercials for Tomb Raider 3? I think I remember one where the... Um, the Luke said. Yeah, and there was... Well, I've got a bottle of Luke said actually in my back. Um, and there was another one where you did... It was... Um, I think it was an advert for the game. It was like, hi. 
I'm Lara Croft. <laughs> Tomb Raider 3, and they're like, all oh, the animations and the new stuff with it. Oh, yeah, I did that, yeah. And secondly, have you seen, this might be obscure, but have you seen any drag queens use your sound bites in any drag numbers for Tomb Raider related? That's a really good question. Um, no. Would you, <laughs> would you like to? <laughs> I only know one drag queen. And uh, no, no, I don't. Um, there was another part of the question I was going to answer. The LucasAid advert. We did oh, a whole. Lucas Aid. <laughs> it was that the, uh, I think it's the guy. Well, no, when we first did it, it was Lara, as LucasAid, and there was a whole script. So I thought, God, I can't, oh, this is going to be brilliant. And then they cut all the speaking. So it was just, just her and Lucas. Aid. The guy was playing the video game. And then he pauses it, and then you go back. You like go back to normal and drink the Lucasaid with the guy. Yeah. And he goes, "Oh, Lucasaid." Oh no, 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 no. There was no, no. There was no speaking in at all. I think there might have been a grunt if I'm, <laughs> I wasn't paid for a grunt. <laughs> so I think that's it for questions. But I've got one question, I guess, for Chris. What does it mean to you that you know, you're sat here today talking to Judith? Oh, don't ask me that. <laughs> um, like many people here, I grew up with Tomb Raider, and if little me could see me now, mm. I think it would blow his mind. Um, yeah, this has been so an sweet. absolute privilege and a pleasure speaking to you. Oh, thank you. And thank you. yeah, thank you so much. No, thank you. For and, everything. and thank you, everybody. I'm just, I'm just gobsmacked. I'm humbled and. I'm we love you. Don't you think you've seen enough?